how people are using AWS for backup and archiving strategies. There are three or four common strategies that uh, quite a lot of customers use. Let us go one by one. So this is the most simple and most common or uh, intuitive one in my opinion. You have an S3 bucket and then you configure uh, lifecycle policies. So automatically your uh, bucket moves your data from uh, standard storage to your Glacier storage after 30 days. And after seven years, after your compliance policies expire, then you can automatically delete it. So this way you are doing both backup for archival storage and automatic cleanup also. So this is one common strategy that accounts have started adopting. The next common strategy is configuring your on-premise systems to use Amazon Cloud Storage. So in this case, Amazon uses the Storage Gateway VM. That is, if you go to Storage Gateway, you will be given a VM copy for your account and then you go ahead and configure it in your on-premise uh, servers Hyper-V or uh, VMware anywhere and you can attach your local storage that is as shown here in this uh, example there is some direct attached storage disks or SAN disks or you can have an iSCSI cable and configure it to other servers also so or that is on the one side of it on-premise side of it on the cloud side of it Amazon will use your uh, VPN encryption or if you provide uh, your own direct connect cable between on-premise and cloud and you will use those uh, networking capabilities and using the storage gateway console you can configure s3 as an endpoint for your storage or you can configure uh, ebs volumes also for as an endpoint so in other words you can send the data from your uh, on-premise all the way to your s3 storage and it retrieve it whenever you need it so there are two things you can do one is a gateway cached that is what you see here and then gateway stored so when you're cached means data is stored in your s3 and uh, that is let us say the most of the data most uh, data say 80 percent i don't want to put a number but the most frequently accessed data will be locally copied in your local disk but all the other data which are not frequently accessed and other data is all storing in your s3 this is what called as a cache to volume the other one is 80 percentage of your data stays here but only the rest goes to your s3 bucket so gateway cached gateway uh, stored that is what it means and then you can push your snapshots also let us say uh, in vmware or uh, in other hypervisors you can create a snapshot of your root disk in vmware you can create something called as a vmdk files that is nothing but your operating system plus some binaries packaged into one single file so yeah that is similar to what an ami amazon calls it amazon machine image so you can create an a vmdk file and push it as a backup to your s3 disks also and you can also create a synchronous or asynchronous backup depending upon what kind of uh, backup that you want so but if you are to, uh, doing amazon configured stored backup it is an asynchronous one so that is another way people use uh, storage gateway along with uh, s3 to create and backup an archiving strategy so the next strategy is extension of the same concept only in this case what happens is it uses both s3 and glazier uh, so there is a concept of called virtual tape library and you can see here the virtual tape library is configured here in your storage gateway and once you configure this you can push your data directly into your glazier so this is another uh, strategy that people use. This is why I said people can push data directly through Glacier sometimes when you're using CLA mode or storage gateways. So that is also possible. And if you are having frequently accessed data, so from your server, you can go all the way through this pipeline and put it into your S3 buckets. So both of them are possible when you're trying to use a virtual tape library. And this is an industry standard library. So it is compatible with any of your existing applications that you might have on premise in other words you can configure it for some of the oldest systems that might be running in your on premise systems so the final use case for disaster recovery so let us imagine a simple website that is running here you can see here there is a dns service that is the entry point and amazon dns service is called as route 53 and www.mywebsite.com and it's a three-tier architecture you have a web server you have an app server and you also have a database server 
and you can notice that some the database server has a few amount of uh, disks that is attached and remember all of this is on premise not on the cloud so this entire setup is on on premise not on aws cloud at all but what i'm showing here is you can create a storage gateway volume and then you can take a snapshot for all these disks and send it to the cloud so in this case amazon is uh, showing that as an image that is ami images say for database web servers and app servers and you also have some s3 files are also getting copied so all those backups are constantly stored and what happens is let us say for some reason your on-premise data center has a failure might be power failure coolant failure or some natural disaster so in those cases what you can do is you can go ahead and create a server from those machine images that you have created just now so all these machine images can be used to start a server and then you can go ahead and reroute your dns traffic to this new web application even when you are trying to recover your on-premise data center from the disaster so that is how you can create a disaster recovery strategy so the snapshots will be automatic and you can create uh, some automation so that whenever uh, the server goes offline start creating images or start creating servers from these images and then you go ahead and route your traffic from your dns to this web server so this is uh, one DR strategy that the people are following uh, to recover on-premise as well